Hi everybody, this is a demonstration of how the Taylor series approximation improves as you add terms to the Taylor series. What I'm going to demonstrate is how the graph of a function evolves as you add terms to the Taylor series. So we're going to use the uh, function y equals the cosine of x and we'll show how this works. So the cosine of x can be approximated by a Taylor series that looks like this, as you can see on your screen. So each of these individual terms, one minus x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial, et cetera, each of these terms is going to um, refine the Taylor series approximation for the cosine of x. And I'm going to show you a demonstration using a graph of the cosine of x of how this refinement occurs. So what you can see on your screen now is a graph of the cosine of x. This is the, a graph of the actual function cosine of x from 0 to 7 pi. Uh, I'm sorry, 5 pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to add each individual Taylor series term to this graph. And we'll see how eventually with more terms of the Taylor series, we get a better approximation of this function. So the first term of the Taylor series, or actually it's technically the zeroth term of the Taylor series, was uh, when cosine x equals 1. So we'll add that first. So this is the cosine of x equals 1, which basically is just y equals 1. It's a straight line at 1. This is deadly accurate when x equals 0, x equals 2 pi, or x equals 4 pi, but it's way off for all other um, all other values of x. So it's great for a couple of occasions, but not for most of the time. So now we'll add the first Taylor series term here, and we'll run it again. So now we've added one Taylor series term. So this is the uh, first derivative term. And you can see that right at the beginning of the graph, the uh, Taylor series line now follows our cosine line for a short time before it uh, deviates in the downward direction. So now we'll add another term to our Taylor series. And then we get this approximation here. So again, we follow along the cosine uh, function for a little while before the Taylor series version of this function diverges in the upward direction. So now we'll make our n value equal to 3. With n equals 3, we follow the cosine function for a little bit longer before we diverge in the downward direction. Now we'll make n equal 4, n being the number of terms in our Taylor series. So with the fourth term, again, we continue to follow our cosine a little bit longer and then diverge in the upward direction. Here's n equals 5. And n equals 6, and n equals 7. So each time we add a term, our approximation gets better for a longer part of the actual function. So with n equals 8, we almost make it to 2 pi. n equals 9, we'll get even better. n equals 10, here's n equals 11, and n equals 12. So you can see by the time we get to n equals 12, we have pretty well approximated our function all the way from 0 to 2 pi. Um, we actually did pretty well on that up to or at uh, n equals 9, but in order to get a much more accurate picture, I went all the way to n equals 12. But that gets us a pretty good uh, approximation well past 2 pi. Now, with the cosine function, you really only need to get a good approximation out to 2 pi. Anything past that 
the function repeats itself. So we can just add offsets to move our function around in order to uh, have a good approximation. So as you can see, each time you add a term to the Taylor series, you improve the approximation of your function further from x equals zero.